David, can you send me the email link again? I seem to have lost it. Okay, just sent it. I read the email again wide-eyed. I couldn't believe what I was reading. My, my boss, well, my ex-boss, was found to have an affair. Not only that, he was having it with someone over the net. The woman, 33, he apparently found in the vastness, just waiting for someone, something to come and show her love, show her affection. It was interesting, he fell for her really hard, and she caught him in her web, but oddly enough, he was found dead a week later. Well, his wife killed him. See. The net is a world away from ours. It's what we used to call virtual reality. Well, it's it's still virtual reality, but we gave it another name because of how different it's become. Anyway, although I act surprised to hear the news about my boss, I really shouldn't have been. I imagined him being unfaithful before. I came home from work to find my girlfriend fast asleep on the couch. Noticing my own fatigue, I walked over to the fridge and ran my hands blindly over a bottle of beer and grabbed one. I plopped down onto the sofa beside her to watch the slop that was always on at this hour. You know, wives of whatever county, that kind of stuff. I lapped up my beer peacefully with her beside me. Her warmth radiated off her, and I couldn't help but lay down and wrap my arms around her. A number of notifications popped up on different apps sprung to life on the TV, all vying for my attention. Sensing my tiredness, they intuitively vanished for my analysis later. I fell asleep quickly after that. Later that night, I was awoken to the sound of notification chimes coming from my office. Damn data marketers, I think as I stand up and begin walking from the overwhelming brightness of my TV to the blue soft glow of the laptop. I lifted the screen and had to squint my eyes to skim the recent messages. Junk, 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 virtual therapy for $35 an hour, junk, and then the last one. It read, Scandal. With furrowed brows, I clicked on it. I was sent off to a blank white web page. Five seconds went by and nothing. Obviously, it wasn't working, so I exited the page. The same scandal notification popped up. Weird. So I clicked on it again. Blank white web page once again. Wait! Oh, it must be interactive. Silly me. I wrapped the headset around my head and looked down at the little laptop screen. A solid blue face peered up at me. It didn't move or interact until I was about to say hello. Hi, we saw that you read about your boss. Yeah, what about it? Well, aren't you curious, Lena? Aren't you curious as to what it's like to be with one of us? The blue face, solid, winked at me wryly. Oh, uh, well, no. Why would I? I have a girlfriend. My cheeks went slightly red. So? It asked playfully. You don't want to know what you're missing? I guess you wouldn't want to know what your girlfriend has been up to either. I couldn't look away. Out of the blue, solid face came an excruciatingly beautiful woman. Curvaceous build bright blue eyes, and red flowing hair, yeah, with a smattering of dark red lipstick, too. Well, we don't really have any secrets between us. Oh? It giggled and winked again. Well, all I know is she's keeping something from you. I took the headset off and nervously looked around the office room to see if I was truly alone and not under the watchful eyes of Liz. 
Oh, okay, what do you think she's keeping from me? I'm just curious. Like, like I said, we don't really keep secrets, so I'm not worried. See, here's the thing. Everything on the net is like virtual reality, what it used to be like. Everything on it is more tempting, learning constantly about you. And it's free, see, but it comes at a cost. We knew that when we got the headset, just that it was too good to be true. But as the months went by, we didn't notice any problems with it. We in fact thought it was pretty fun, especially after work when we wanted to relax and watch TV. When you talk to a person on the net, it becomes mesmerizing. Your attention prioritizes what is being said and blocks out anything else. TV, girlfriend, a neighbor shouting bloody murder. It all pretty much goes away and it feels good. It's different. Not any more emotional than you want it to be. It reads you, listens, and knows what you want. What you need. And then it lives. Oh, Elena, she's been very naughty. Without you. <laughs> oh, yeah, how do you know that? A screenshot came across my line of vision to show a text interaction between Liz and someone else. They were suggestive, crude, and didn't sound anything like Liz. I thought to myself that it was definitely fake. No, it's not fake, Lena. A video then popped up showing my girlfriend having dinner with a tall blonde woman in a lime green dress. After, a video popped up showing them kissing in what I am assuming was the woman's front room. Soon, they went into the bedroom, and the video stopped. Uh, where did you get this? A nervous sweat started under my brows. Well, we know everything. We see everything. Remember the cost you were thinking about in your head? Well, this is the cost. Right, but, but who's... We can't give you a name, but we can go through your girlfriend's phone if you like. Yes, just do it. The nervousness had worn off, and now I was upset. Getting red in the face, I took off the headset and went out to the living room to see my girlfriend, still sleeping. Storming back into the office, I jammed the headset back on to find lewd pictures and texts from my girlfriend's phone sent to the same number of the woman with the green dress. How could she do this? I just don't understand. This this is, just isn't like her. Well, people are not who they seem to be, Lena. She's been doing this since you two bought the headset, actually. She just isn't very satisfied with you, and she wants something different. See these texts here? Yeah, I see them. Tears streaming down my face now. I couldn't control my anger any longer. I stormed back out to the living room and yanked the blanket off of Liz. Get up! Startled, she fell on the floor. What? what? What's going on, sweetie? I know what you did. I know you've been seeing someone else. What? S sweetie, what, what are you talking about? Why, why would I do that? I love you. You only. Lies. Get out. No, honey, I... And don't call me honey. Shock and tears enveloping her features, she got dressed, packed her bags, and left confused, horrified, at her sudden discovery. Rain clattered against the rooftop of the apartment building and leapt down onto the street below. She stood on the street corner, peering into the eerie mist that now was descending onto the city. <sighs> what am I going to do now? She was still crying and was trying to f stop the tears when a figure peeked around the corner of an adjacent street. The faintly red lips formed a smile and the woman said, Love is always waiting. The woman, crying, glanced over when she noticed a movement and shuddered. Who are you? The luminescent woman with red lipstick and bright blue eyes came strolling over. I'm Chelsea. Who are you, my darling? It doesn't matter, just leave me alone, she said, hiding her teary face from the strange woman. Chelsea stood, standing next to the woman, 
She averted her intense blue eyes as the other woman looked up at her. Chelsea reached down and held her hand. Eh, relationship problems? Yeah, you could say that. I didn't even do anything. My girlfriend just kicked me out. Said I was cheating. Chelsea withheld a knowing smile from the woman. Sweetie, please tell me what your name is. It's Liz. Well, okay, Liz. Her peering into Liz's eyes. It's gonna be okay. You know how I know? Because you and I are going to talk somewhere quiet and less stormy and figure this out. How does that sound? A muffled, <laughs> okay, between sobs. They strode off into the night. And now, for a brief intermission. Back in the apartment, I walked back and forth, over and over, right beside the couch where Liz was sleeping just a few minutes ago. I sat right in the middle, retaking what was hers. I know it was petty, but it felt good. In a way, I was glad that Liz was gone. And I didn't want to have any more cheaters in my life than I had in my past. I ignored the dull pain clawing its way out of my chest, tears streaming down my face. I didn't even wipe them away. I just stared through blurred vision at the painfully bright TV screen that illuminated the overwhelming dark of the apartment. Another damn notification pinged on my phone. Through burning, blurred vision, I saw a picture. I didn't need to wipe my eyes, but I did anyway, just to make sure. And sure enough, it was Liz's face. Anger shot into me like a sleeping dragon coming out of its cave after a long rest. What was she doing? I snatched up the phone, unlocking it to see why the hell she would send something like that after what just happened. Liz was in the rain with the blue illuminated woman from the net I had just seen on her headset half an hour ago. Liz and the woman were holding hands and laughing at the screen. That's... that's... But I didn't finish the sentence. Instead, I ran into the closet to dress properly for the night that was now darker than ever, and the weather that was much more rainy than only a moment before. With the swiftness only rage could bring, I rushed out the door. The rain let up a little as I strode furiously out to the entrance doors of the apartment building. I let out a little huff as I walked along the road in the direction I thought they were going, at least by the looks of the camera. Walking under the street lights, I had to squint to see ahead of me until a blue illuminated figure stepped out of an alleyway. It looked at me and then quickly ran toward a nearby shop door parallel to the alleyway they had just come out of. Wait! I yelled after them, but they did not reappear. Yeah, I stood under the streetlight and contemplated following it, but did not. I was too tired, too... something, to want to deal with this right now. The blue figure stepped through the shop window. It was an old barber shop. It had been closed for nearly 15 years, but this was as safe a place as any to talk. Yeah, I think she was coming to find you, Liz, sweetie. Liz cried and snorted disgust at her. <laughs> oh, she knows she made a mistake, doesn't she? I don't think she does. She was walking in this direction, but stopped and went back to the apartment. I, I think I heard her say something like, Ah, oh, she's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. She did? What? I, I didn't do anything. I don't get it. Oh, I know, darling. Liz resumed crying again. We've got work to do. We need to make this right. The blue woman smiled serenely down at Liz who emerged in front of her, dried tear streaks down her cheeks. Confusion, sadness, and anger all vying for control. I got back into the apartment, set my coat down, and decided to shower. 
I just wanted to get rid of this confusion of all feelings. Something wasn't right, and I knew it, but didn't want to admit that Liz might not have cheated on me, that she might have been right all along. I wanted to be angry, wanted to be the victim. It was easy that way after all. I thought I'd heard something outside the bathroom. Probably just the next door neighbor wobbling down the hallway, drunk as a skunk once again. That happened pretty much nightly. They would knock on the other doors and ask if they wanted to party. Eh, Funny thing is no one ever said yes, but they continued asking anyway. A blue woman came into the apartment and latched the door. She wrote a note and put it on the fridge and tiptoed as quietly as she could over to the living room. She looked slyly over to the bathroom and then, satisfied that I was busy, began breaking and thrashing and destroying as much of the apartment as she could. After Chelsea was satisfied with the mess left behind, she left. Hearing the commotion, I rushed out of the shower half-naked looking in horror at the mess that was left. I began crying and went to see the damage done in the kitchen. A large note was left. Its screen illuminated in the darkness, and it read, Take that, you B. By L. I ripped the note off the fridge and crushed its electronic insides. Gritted teeth and wild eyes, I went searching in the dark blindly. Betrayed yet again, I hurried over the closet and reached into the safe to grab the revolver. I I can't, I... Why was I even considering it? I left it in the safe and hurried out of the apartment. Chelsea came back through the shop door to see Liz standing, swaying, in the oncoming night air as if suspended by invisible threads, daring to let her go. Her tear-streaked face began to glisten as Chelsea made her way over to her. They embraced. It'll be okay. I'll, I'll take care of you. We don't need her, do we? (sighs) Probably not, shuddered Liz. Then let's go show her that you don't need her. Show me how strong of a woman you are. I came out of the apartment, went down the stairs, and just started looking. For Liz. I started to suspect the elusive appearance of that blue, luminous woman was at the core of this, but nonetheless... I wanted answers. Now. And suddenly, the alleyway with the shop opened up with a brilliant blue light illuminated a figure in front. Liz. Liz shielded her eyes from the rain that once again poured and splashed in all directions in the night. Once she was in the middle of the street facing me, I said, Why did you do it? I didn't cheat. Also, you put in so much effort to try to talk things over with me. Confusion flooded through me. When she came out before, it was to look for Liz. That was it. No, Liz. I came to look for you. (laughs) Yeah, right. She scoffed, leaving a chilly vacancy of breath in the air in front of her. No, Liz, really. I just couldn't believe you'd do such a thing to the apartment. What was that? Accusing me of something else I didn't do? A shot rang off and hit me in the left shoulder. The force hit me so hard I was knocked off onto the ground. Head pounding and blood started to seep down into the street beneath me. Darkness enveloped me. Liz gasped and coughed and sputtered at the shock of seeing Lena blown away in front of her. She twisted around to see Chelsea with a revolver smiling insanely at her, and then at Lena on the ground. Liz not so much as said anything but ran over to Lena to see. Maybe she was still alive, but nothing was to be done. Lena lay motionless on the pavement, blood seeping out below her, the puddle growing larger, darker by the second. Liz stood slowly and faced Chelsea, Oh, honey, you know it had to be done. She wasn't going to forgive you. 
she was lost. She was no good for you. You know that now. But, but she's dead. She didn't need to die. Lizzie, honey, I can see into the future. I can recall things. I can tell the precise sequence of numbers in a data set created years ago. While I also tell you every conversation you've ever had with her, she would have hurt you down the road anyway. But things can change. It's not set in stone what will happen. That's what you were led to believe. No, I don't believe you. You came up to me from somewhere down the street. Why? If you can see into the future and past and know what people will become, did you come up to me because you knew? You knew you could wedge your way in and ruin us? Silence. The blue woman smiled and it, it, it did not waver in the brightening light that was slowly becoming morning. I knew you would be a problem. I knew you would get in my way eventually if I didn't do what had to be done. I haven't done anything to you. You remember that company you worked for before you quit and moved in with Lena? Yeah, but that was years ago. Your old company became Burgundy, the company that runs me and the net. Liz knew why. She knew with all her heart. She knew with certainty because she created Chelsea. It was before the program looked like this, of course, my god. She wanted to ruin the relationship to break her. She wanted to get to Liz because Liz knew how to destroy her. Liz began to run as fast as she could down the alleyway the shop door was on. She dashed and darted to other streets, but as soon as she felt she had gained enough ground, Chelsea was waiting, illuminated at the end of a very dark alleyway. <sighs> Goodbye, Liz. And she vanished. Liz could hear sirens approaching and leapt to run away again, but oddly was burdened by a heavy lump in her coat pocket. The gun. She grabbed at it and threw it as far down the alley as she could. Crossing over into another street, she tripped and landing on her knees, gasped out in pain. Police cars were waiting for her. Guns pointed. She froze. Two hours later. I just don't get it, lady. You killed your girlfriend over what? I didn't kill her. My God, how many times do I have to say it? Yeah, but your fingerprints all are all over the gun. You did it. No, this illumination from the net. She did it like I told you for the reasons I've told you five times over. Ma'am, there are restrictions on those things. They can't just walk around committing murder. Look, I, I've heard enough of this fiction. We're charging you. At that moment, a small TV screen on the other side of the room blinked, and Liz swore she saw a lightly illuminated blue face smiling at her from afar. From somewhere, she would never be able to reach, to reach out and cut it off. Electric blue flooded the city's many streets, apartments, and offices. The program ran its course.